Great to, uh, great to be with you. Uh, coming to this, it's, this is an awesome site. You know, I had uh, uh, memories of Led Zeppelin albums. I think a lot of people my age can uh, identify with that. Uh, younger people would say uh, Skyfall, part of Skyfall is filmed here. But I saw the, uh, the schematic of what this is to be. Apartment buildings, uh, retail stores, uh, condominiums, and said, what a waste of a good building to do all that silly stuff when you could be actually ha generating electricity, which seems like a far more noble thing to do, but uh, be that as it is. So what I thought I'd do is give you some context as we start the day on, uh, on uh, what we mean by minds and machines, what we mean by the industrial internet. Uh, again, we view, you know, our business is always changing and growing and evolving. And every now and then we kind of lift our head up and say, okay, here's a, here's a path and it's a way for us to engage with customers and thought leaders, entrepreneurs, to just do a check and see are we on the right path or are there ways we can get better and smarter. And that's what today's session really is. We did it in the U.S. in uh, November and this is a way to get a European context to, uh, to this as well. So uh, GE is uh, really uh, the GE uh, uh, culture, I think, stands for uh, four things. We're mission-based. Uh, we're always searching for a better way, so it's a company that's about uh, changing and evolving and learning. Uh, Solutions-oriented, so we're looking for ways to bring the breadth of our company to bear for our customers and society. And it's very much a team-based, a, a we culture, not a me culture. And so we always kind of start the, the initiatives and the innovations and the things we do from the context of the, uh, of the total company. And that's we fly under the banner of what we call GE Works, which really frames uh, the strategy of, uh, of what we do. Um, in every generation, we try to associate the company with those innovations that are going to drive productivity and try to lead those. Uh, we think productivity in the end is what uh, creates wealth, it's what drives economic growth, and growth is needed in Europe, growth is needed in the United States, and it's something that we always want to drive. And we see really four big waves right now. And, and uh, certainly there's an energy revolution going on in the United States and in other parts of the world driven by unconventional fuel, other places with low cost renewables. But, but this move with unconventional fuel in the United States is a game changer that, that ch shifts and, and changes economic power and, and economic productivity. Uh, we see good, incredible evolutions in advanced manufacturing so that you can uh, create products in uh, faster cycle time, lower cost, using different materials. And I, I actually think that the whole nature of manufacturing is changing, where uh, material science will dominate, uh, where the individual cost of labor is going to be less important. And this is going to be a big economic driver, we think, in the future as well. Uh, we think there's ways for companies like GE to run faster and leaner with information technology, in terms of uh, what it can mean in internal productivity for companies like ours. And the fourth big pillar is the application of the internet to the industrial setting, what we call the industrial internet. And so these four things are all places uh, in all areas where we placed our own investment dollars, uh, where we bet on the future. And what I'm going to do today is really delve more deeply, dive more deeply into the industrial internet and what we think that means uh, for the future. The, um, go to the next slide. So today, when we think about the products that we make, you really have a combination of material science. When you think about a jet engine or a gas turbine or oil and gas equipment or any of those uh, uh, products that we make, MR scanner, CT scanner, You've got uh, a, a, a material science that drives performance data, prognostics, and, and capability. And that today is added to uh, data and information technology. So a jet engine, we, we don't have, we, all of our real jet engines are at the Paris Air Show, so this is schematic. A jet engine is going to have maybe 20 sensors, and it's going to be taking uh, continuous real-time data and you can add that data uh, from a jet engine real time to the way that you're modeling uh, performance of your engine. And the combination of these two things is going to drive customer outcomes. So when you add this information together, you're going to get uh, a better fuel performance. 
You're going to know uh, when products are going to fail before they fail. You're going to be able to drive better outcomes. And so at the genesis of what we're talking about here, it's the combination of material science and analytics for the purpose of driving better customer outcomes. Uh, we've been investing in analytics for a couple years now. We can take our jet engines and we can model the wear on a turbine blade, on a fan blade, in different cities around the world. And so the wear of a blade is different in Dubai and Chicago and Dallas and Brazil. And that allows us to do a better job of driving fuel performance. It, it allows us to do a better job of matching performance and failure. And so it's this combination of analytics and materials which we think is going to help create uh, the future. Uh, social media, which is where uh, the internet has created change so far and, and, and where you've seen tremendous capability, is all about breadth. It's all about the number of touch points, uh, a billion users in Facebook and, and things like that that try to open up new ways to, to think about retail and consumer access. Uh, we think the industrial internet is all about depth. So small performance changes can drive massive economics in the marketplace and for our customers. Again, going back to uh, uh, my uh, analogy with the aircraft engines business, if you improve the GE installed base of aircraft engines by one percentage point in fuel, fuel performance a year, that saves our customers $2 billion uh, to the bottom line. I can go through and give you similar examples when it pertains to velocity uh, of railroads, uh, uptime of LNG plants, uh, fuel or energy performance of gas turbines. So what we call the power of one is one of the big messages I'd give you today, that in the industrial setting, small performance changes drive massive outcomes for our customers. So that's, when we talk about the industrial internet, that's one of the con contextual points uh, that I drive. Uh, three components that basically are, uh, are being put together here. It's a smart machine, so it's big installed base that have sensors and capability in the installed base. Uh, advanced analytics, so the ability to model data, take real-time data and, and create uh, models and software and doing it in a mobile setting. So doing it in a, in a setting where you can leverage mobility, where the people, uh, service engineers and people in the field can, uh, can drive results. And, and the context with which I think about it, or the context which, with which we think about it, is what I would call bottoms up. So I start with the assets and move up through the enterprise. So w when we first started this, maybe two or three years ago, and uh, many of you are going to think this is a vision, and it still is a vision, but my, my, our, our first premise is, no unplanned downtime. So if we can go to a customer and say, look, our, our first premise is really to be able to do predictive failure, to be able to get the service technicians in the right place at the right time, no unplanned downtime, that's step one. Step two is what I would call asset optimization, so getting every asset operating at the peak fuel performance, the peak efficiency performance, the peak environmental performance, emissions performance, uh, having great output. And then the third layer is enterprise optimization. So how do we get our assets performing in context of all the assets that our customer might have? Yesterday, uh, we announced a, a, uh, a, a big commitment with Etihad at the Paris Air Show where we've got a joint venture with Accenture called Telaris where we're basically going to work with Etihad and planning their entire fleet performance for the purpose of improving their maintenance and operational performance. So no unplanned downtime, asset optimization, enterprise optimization, these are the three pillars. The facilitators are smart machines, analytics, and, and execution in a mobile setting. And then there's a series of things that we need to be good at. Software uh, is capability we're adding. So, GE has 9,000 software engineers today inside our company and our businesses. Analytics and cloud, these are capabilities we're adding. So we've, we've built uh, uh, both through partnerships and through capability, we've added uh, assets inside the company. Uh, material science, this, is, uh, this goes back to Edison. 
Uh, GE probably has more metallurgists and, and material science patents than probably any company in the world. So these are things we've already been able to do. And then the way that we put these in a software and systems. So, so this is when we think about, you know, all of the capabilities, these are how we've tried to stitch them together. Uh, the last word I'd leave you with is outcomes. You know, I, I think we, we believe that in the future, the demands that are going to be put on our company or the demands that are going to be put on our products are going to be delivered through uh, performance guarantees, right? Uh, talking about fuel, talking about uptime, talking about capability. So, you know, you no longer can have an arm's, arm's length relationship with your customer. You've got to have performance relationships with your customer. So this is how we view this capability, why it's important, and where we are. Now, we launched nine uh, specific offerings in uh, November of last year, ones that we've been working on that kind of fit this asset uh, uh, optimized solution and enterprise optimized solutions. Uh, we'll get about $800 million of orders in these nine uh, uh, offerings uh, this year. And these range from uh, the one I mentioned on, on, uh, on uh, 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 the, the new operation with, with Etihad to kind of fuel optimization uh, programs of big class one railroads in the United States to uh, what, we call, what we call flex efficiency, which we can use in gas turbines to try to drive either better efficiency or better output. Uh, Dose Watch is CT Dose that we do as a, a suite and information capability on our CT scanners. Uh, fuel and carbon solutions we do with customers to help model fuel performance because that's the largest operating cost uh, for our customers. Uh, Grid IQ is improving the assets and capability of uh, power generation. Subsea integrity for our oil and gas customers is ways to make sure that we don't have failure in critical uh, dimensions. And so this is sensor and control technology. Uh, optimization and diagnostics is work we're co-collaborating on with customers to use digital technology to predict failure under the sea. So, you know, we plan just to roll out these capabilities uh, one by one. But again, as I said, very specific to the assets and very specific to customer applications and customer outcomes. So I, I never see GE becoming a software company per se, uh, but we're a service company. And we use software to facilitate the enterprise with our customers and the, and the connections uh, with our customers. So uh, it's real, it's specific, it's measurable. We've launched it, and that's, uh, that's kind of where we, uh, where we stand today. Uh, the last context I would give you is just, uh, you know, kind of we view this as the next step in our service business. So we have uh, literally hundreds of thousands of units in our installed base of uh, aircraft engines, gas turbines, LNG plants, MR scanners, locomotives. We already have with our customers these commitments, long-term commitments to do service and capability. It's uh, $45 billion in revenue for us. So. What we've envisioned here is a way to enhance and, and uh, drive capability in an existing uh, GE interface with our customers. And, and our goals for this year are to, are to really drive uh, more technology and more innovation. So we'll launch another 20 or 30 uh, key products and technologies this year. Uh, we'll sell them you know, primarily to existing uh, customers. Uh, we're going to facilitate in the room today and in the work uh, that we've done uh, uh, as we launch this initiative, we have big collaboration. So we've got a collaboration with a company named Pivotal that does big data and fast data. We've, we've collaborated with Accenture. Uh, we'll collaborate with mobility companies, telecommunications companies. And so we kind of view this as an extended enterprise uh, uh, approach. And, and like I said, you know, um, the history of a big industrial company like GE is we sell products to our customers, and when they broke, we would fix them. Uh, and that's still important, critically important. But I think the future is all going to be about outcomes, performance, and, and things that our customers can measure, and, and, and using data and analytics to help us, uh, help us get there. So I would say just, just think about new capability today. The new capability is being able to combine material science and analytics, 
uh, think about uh, just no unplanned downtime. Sounds like a very mundane concept. That's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. This is a, you know, now executing it is hard, but it is a massively important economic proposition along with asset optimization and enterprise optimization. Uh, YGE, because we're in the domain. So this is an example of a domain-based company that's moving upstream into analytics versus the other way around. And I would say, uh, at the end of the day, I think every industrial company, so I don't think we'll be alone at all, is going to be creeping into analytics because it's the only way to guarantee that the products you sell are ultimately going to be successful. So that's just uh, a little bit about what the day's about. Uh, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're investing behind this, both in terms of the customer interface and also in terms of the technology. And uh, we're off and going vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, next great future growth opportunity for the company and better performance with our customers. So with that, let me turn it back over to Richard. And uh, I look forward to a great day. Thanks for your attendance.